Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you a first look at a lens that I know that a lot of you are very interested in and that I've gotten a lot of requests to review over the last little while, and that is Tamron's new um, SP 15 to 30 millimeter f2.8 VC, and this is the G2 or Generation 2 edition. I've taken a look at each one of the G2 lenses as they've been released. Um, those included the 150 to 600 millimeter, the 70 to 200, and the 24 to 70 millimeter lenses. And I've been universally impressed with each one of them. And in fact, I ended up purchasing the 70 to 200 f2.8 G2, and I regularly use it. It's a very useful lens, beautifully made, focuses well, just does what I want it to do. And so I've been very interested in using this lens because in a lot of ways, I consider the uh, 15 to 30 millimeter f2.8 to really be the best example of Tamron's work prior to their most recent series of releases. And so from the last generation, I thought that this was pretty much the best lens that they made. And I've put it up against a lot of different wide angle lenses uh, because I've owned it for the last four years. And so I've put it up against all kinds of new challengers, both zooms and primes. And I'm not going to say that it's won every one of those competitions, but at the very least it's been competitive in them all, even with more expensive lenses or prime lenses. And so it has held its own very well. So when Tamron announced the G2 version, uh, I was certainly interested in the lens and uh, interested in seeing if they were able to actually improve upon what I perceived as some of the real flaws with this lens. That includes things like lateral climatic aberration, uh, whether or not it can handle side angle flare a little bit better. And uh, then of course, you know, to continue to build upon its strengths, which is very, very good sharpness, ec excellent contrast and micro contrast, and what I consider to be some of the most Zeiss-like non-Zeiss color that I have seen. Very, very good. So I'm, I'm hoping that they've been able to continue in that vein. Now, one final note before we jumped in and go in hands-on, just so you know, even for future Tamron releases, is that Tamron has made it its practice to, in the last year or two, to first release the Nikon mount versions of their lenses and then following that up with Canon. A byproduct of that, of course, is, is that I don't review Nikon, I don't own Nikon bodies, and so I have to wait until they bring out Canon versions. The great news is, however, is that I have a fantastic relationship with um, distributors of Tamron products, both here in Canada and in the United States. And so they are very good to get me um, product as promptly as possible when it does come out, which they have done here, by the way. So let's jump in and let's take a closer look at this new G2 version of this excellent lens. The first thing to note about the new uh, G2 uh, lens uh, from Tamron is that, uh, like its predecessor, it is a very large lens. And uh, at the same time, however, it is identically large to the first generation lens. And so uh, looking at them actually straight on, the first thing that stood out to me is that really they look more similar than different, at least at a glance. They have the same basic proportions and the same basic look. However, where on the first generation lens, these areas that you know, aren't occupied by either focus or zoom rings are an engineered plastic. On the G2 lens, we have a metal alloy that is there in those places instead. And as far as the accent, you know, basic look goes, this has a little bit more of a kind of a matte finish where this has more of the, uh, the newer kind of sleeker look to it, kind of an anodized metal uh, surface in a satin type finish. And instead of there being this little kind of aluminum accent ring, platinum ac accent ring, they have, you know, near the lens mount, they have the luminous gold type accent section, um, as they uh, call it. And so uh, beyond that, I did notice that it, for, as far as the feel, there is a little bit of a different design um, when it comes to the actual manual focus ring, which actually, although it's quite narrow, it feels really good. And part of that is because it has a bulge here in the center that um, allows it to kind of stand out and to be easily found uh, by texture. Another nice thing is that they have a, a 
curve here moving up to the focus ring section. And so it gives a very natural place for your finger to rest in there. And so it feels very natural. Um, and obviously they've done that also here. And so if you're looking through the viewfinder, and trying to locate those rings by feel. Uh, it's very easy to do that. Of course, the focus ring is closer to the lens mount and the um, actual zoom ring is further out. Now, like the previous generation lens, uh, the lens is the most retracted. It's all internal, of course, but it is the most retracted at the 30 millimeter position and it is, you know, the most forward in terms of the front element at the 15 millimeter position. And so like before, there is a fixed built-in lens hood that is there and um, inside you'll see the inner movement and there's a kind of a redundant lens hood there that helps to protect that front element. And so when you zoom forward, you actually end up with like a double hood um, at the 15 millimeter position. Now the uh, actual action here is it's still, the damping is on the heavier side, but it is smoother than what uh, my original copy of this lens was. And, um, and even still, I've actually had uh, Tamron do some service on the lens. They replaced some bushings in there. And so it's actually a lot smoother than what it originally was. But I still find that the action is a little bit better on the new lens. And also, um, which, which could be significant, on my original lens, there's really a feel of air pumping as you go back and forth, and uh, there's a little less of that on this lens, and so uh, positive there. Another market improvement that I noted is the feel of the actual switches. Now, on both lenses, there is a, you know, they're kind of located in the same position, but as you'll see on the, the original lens, there's a little bit of a flush mount type feel, and the switches action themselves feels um, just cheaper and less sophisticated. Here, they're more precise feeling, and you have this raised section that is easy to find with a thumb if you're supporting the camera, and so will be easy to um, determine these by feel. So while the basic design of the two lenses is very similar, I've noted that the new changes to the lens, the G2 design, while they're subtle, they definitely are useful and they add up to a better ergonomic experience. Now, uh, once again, this lens is designed in Japan, which they make it bold. Now, in some cases you end up with, you know, it, it actually being manufactured elsewhere. In the case of the copy that I've got here, it's also actually made in Japan as well. And the model number, this is uh, Tamron's internal code AO41 in terms of the model. Now, another uh, couple of things here to note is that while the original lens did have a rear gasket and some internal sealing, uh, Tamron has stepped up the internal seal portion of uh, the G2 lens and it now has um, even more internal sealing and a far more robust weather sealing. Um, you've got a, a flooring coating on the front. The other thing that is an addition here is that unlike the original lens, what you see now is the ability to uh, use some rear filters. Um, now, obviously these are going to be quite shallow gel type filters that are there, but at least it does give you, give you a native filter solution because obviously with either of these, the bulbous front element, it rules out using any kind of uh, front filter here, uh, just like the original lens. Now, in terms of the, the basic design here, uh, the overall length and uh, all of that, it is basically identically the same. The one difference is, is that the new G2 version, it puts on a little tiny bit of weight, but it's not significant. On my scales, uh, the G2 weighs in at 1,096 or 97 grams, about three to four grams underneath the where, where it's listed. And uh, the, uh, the original lens weighs in at 1,082 grams, which it was actually originally listed as being about the same as the G2 lens. And so it's actually a little bit lighter than that. Uh, and so one other thing to note is just the actual uh, lens gasket back here is a little bit more robust even by feel on the G2 lens itself. And so not a whole lot of difference. They've managed to make some significant upgrades here without adding a lot of weight, which is good because this is already a large and heavy lens.
Now, in terms of the basic internals of the lens specifications, they are the same. What we're going to find is that this really is more of an optimized version. It's, it's a similar optical formula, but there are some things that they have done inside to help performance. Uh, first of all, they have gone to a dual processor setup inside. And so what that means is that it has dedicated processor for the VC performance. And so what we see is about a stop and a half improvement in terms of the stability, the VC. And so it's now rated at 4.5 stops, which is actually, it's very, very good for a wide angle lens. Um, because a lot of times the, uh, the VC systems are not as efficient on a wide angle lens. So I'll test this obviously, but you should be able to hand hold very, very low shutter speeds with this lens. Though my experience says is there's a practical limit uh, to how low you can go before your, your movement is just too significant to be overcome by that. Still uh, always welcome to have a better rating for that. The other thing too is that the AF performance is also improved. And I have noted that the AF performance is actually really, really snappy with this new version. And um, it, it basically is as close as you can get to inter instantaneous, I think is what you would want. And so it just locks focus pretty much instantly and all the situations that I've put it in thus far. And so a very strong autofocus performance. They've also added a little bit, one more coating. There's three different coatings that they utilize. And so before, I believe if I remember correctly, this was the first lens to utilize the B-Bar and E-Band coatings. This new uh, G2 version has also added an AX or anti-reflection coating, which hopefully will help to solve the one kind of optical issue. Um, in terms of flare, and that was particularly kind of when side light hit the front element, it would cause uh, some flaring. Hopefully that's improved here. The other things that they have worked to improve uh, through optimization is to reduce distortion, which I'll certainly test for that, and that would be welcome. And they've also worked to el eliminate what was an optical issue with the original one, and that was some lateral chromatic aberration or chromatic aberrations along the side of the frame. So Tamron has managed to make a number of improvements, at least in terms of the ergonomic design, the build quality, those things that we can see um, hands-on in this episode. And they've done it without uh, significantly raising the price. And, and so the price of the original lens has drifted down to $1,199. Um, you can get it sometimes at $10.99 on sale. Uh, that's US pricing. The G2 version has an MSRP of $12.99. And so it's not an inexpensive lens, but at the same time, it is a extremely competitively priced lens that I suspect is going to hold up very well um, when compared to a number of other competitors. And so certainly a lot of pluses there. And so um, stay tuned for my ongoing coverage. If you'll look in the description down below, I have an image gallery and I'm taking photos. And of course, in these early stages, I'm just starting to. So check back regularly there and look at that because I'll be adding a lot more photos over this review cycle. Uh, beyond that, you can also find a buying links if you'd like to order one for yourself. It is just now starting to um, maybe hit retailers. And so you, um, I would encourage you that if you're interested in the lens to get an order in uh, sooner rather than later, as I suspect it will be a popular item uh, going into this you know, fall, winter, uh, holiday buying season. And so uh, jump in on that. Of course, you can also find links to follow me there on social media to become a patron. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.